five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to the Run Live Podcast. I'm your girl, your host, Rashawn Guillory. Thank you for tuning back in to come see something amazing where we're running life and we're living Christ every single day. How was your day today? Was it good? I hope it was good. Okay, because today, I can't tell you what day it is because I'm probably going to not post this on the day that I'm actually recording it, but today's a good day and whatever day it is, I hope you're having a good day. Um, Welcome back um intro i kind of did that make sure you like follow subscribe and share anything that's going on with us just to make sure you know just in case i get on and we're doing a live something we have merch dropping i want you to come back and be in tune with what we're doing god is doing an amazing thing i feel a shift like straight up in my spiritual life in the people around me so you know sometimes when one person feels something it's it's kind of going on everywhere it's kind of like a cycle so look we're going to be shifting into some new things and i'm really proud and happy at what god is asking me to do and pulling on me to do so make sure you follow like subscribe share so you get the notifications every time we come on right so you know me we jump right into prayer let's pray Lord God, I just want to thank you for the day. Thank you for fueling us up, letting us be here, be fully present, be fully loving you, and be fully in this shift, really partaking in the new things that you're going to do, God. Thank you for gifting us with the gift of life. Thank you for breath, experiencing this new realm we've never been before. And Lord God, as we're here, help us to do the very best that we can to keep it together while we're here. Keep putting the word in our heart. Keep putting good love in our heart. Amazing things. Just keep putting us where we're supposed to be, right? Or at least instructing us to get there, God. I thank you for everything that you provided for us. No matter what circumstances we've gone through, thank you for whatever it is that you've imparted into our lives. We are grateful, grateful, grateful. Oh, we are grateful because I know I am. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You know, I love talking to God. I talk to God real funny. Maybe y'all like it. I hope y'all tune in because my prayers, look, they're extra personal. And I'm not scared of what y'all think because, you know, everybody has a different prayer language and type of way that they just kind of talk to God. So I talk to God real funny and real like friendly because I got a real relationship to where I don't got to be like, oh, Lord, Father God. Look, I'm not scripted, baby. Look, God, you look, you know, you already know I messed up last week. I drank way too much wine when I was just trying to sip and just be cool. My bad. Forgive me for drunkenness. My bad. You know, I be having those types of prayers and situations. So be personal with God. It's okay. Have your own type of vibe with God. Don't don't let nobody like mold how you talk to God. Like it's your relationship with God. All right, again, I want to thank y'all for coming back, for being part of episode number two. Look, God is working on me because I'm still here. Hello, hello. And I hope we're learning and we're growing together. Learning and growing together. That's the goal. Running life with Christ in mind, always, because you can't do nothing without him. Even the atheists believe in him because their belief is against them. Ain't that funny? But look, I'm going to move on. Make sure, again, you like, subscribe, follow, share, wherever this may be. Share with your friends. Look, I'm between the ages of like 18 at the death. That's spicy 40, maybe 50. Look, come and see me. That's my demographic. I love y'all and I'm always here for it, honey. Let's get to the news. Look. COVID ain't let us go. I apologize on behalf of, I don't know, but you know, COVID ain't let us go. Last episode, we talked about, you know, everybody's getting out working, getting their truck driving stuff, they're beep, beep, you know, the fueling up all the stores, you know, on every single like store window, it's like, we need help. We need help. We pay this. We need help. We pay this. And it's just like, okay, you know, the workforce is out there. But guess what? 
Delta variant came and said, look, y'all thought uh, somebody was the baddest B. Delta variant is the baddest B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, look, there is so much confusion on whether people should get shots, one, or the people that already got shots. It's a mess. So, people that have already gotten their shots, Moderna, Taverna, Verna, Verna, look, you got your shot and you still contracting COVID. Then the people that haven't gotten their shot, we don't know what they're doing. They live in between. They live in raw. They just out here like, look, COVID, you can't catch me. Then Delta variant, like, look, I'm going to get all y'all. So there's a lot of things going on. And there's still people like literally in the hospital and they're hooking them up to these machines and things like that. So my advice, I'm going to tell y'all my personal opinion because I like my personal opinion, obviously, because it's mine. But it's not y'all's and it don't have to be y'all's. I haven't gotten the shot. Too many side effects. It is supposed to be like a condom. You know, you put it on. I mean, you're not going to get pregnant, but you could get HIV. You know, you get in there and figure out what you want to get and hope you don't get it. If you get it, then you got to deal with it. Look, I don't want cerebral face palsy. OK, I don't want to be having these shakes and shivers and uncontrollable, involuntary look. I don't want that. And I know it does not fully protect against COVID. OK, I can still get COVID. And then you put COVID in my body and I can still get COVID. It's COVID everywhere. Look, I'm really on to profit. Profit is Tiffany Montgomery. Now, nah, I've been watching her. I like her. She's raw. People don't like her. She a raw prophet. She don't give a gosh darn. But I love it because she's a, I forgot that prophet's name. Went into the city to start speaking all kind of mess. Usually prophets aren't like, because they come in saying stuff you really just not feeling. But she was like, something in my spirit dropped to where you should get that brown Listerine. And then I saw an article in there from like, March, you could go on my personal pages on there from March saying that Listerine, the brown kind, actually can kill COVID in the mouth within seconds. I'm like, how do we just bypass this? Obviously, we're having problems with the mouth and respiratory wetness getting on people and people getting COVID and getting on your fingers and stuff like that and getting in your body. If we're cleaning the mouth constantly, we rinse and COVID could be killed in three seconds within the mouth and Lister with Listerine. Why are we doing that? And God spoke to her and that article was found. And I was like, look, she got people running out of out of Listerine all over the place. And it's amazing. I went to go buy mine. Look, I ain't going to lie. I was like, look, she said, stock up on Listerine. I don't know what God dropped in my spirit, but I'm going to share it with y'all because it was dropped. People was clearing out aisles of that brown Listerine. Go get you some brown Listerine. OK, Listerine is trying to figure out why are our sales spiking out of nowhere? Did we have a new marketing strategy? No, it's Tiffany McGovern making everybody not making. The Lord said the Lord told her stock up on that Listerine. It kills COVID in the mouth within seconds. Y'all look. You heard it from me, okay? I heard it from Tiffany. She heard it from God. Look, it's just coming on down. Let it trickle on down. Mm -hmm. Let it trickle on down. Bless yourself. Get you some brown Listerine, all right? This ain't sponsored. Just go save your own life. Protect your kids. Make them wash their mouth out before you get to talking to people without your mask. Praise the Lord. All right. That was good. I like the news. The news is good. <sighs> all right, y'all. The Delta variant is so rude. Here goes our topic. Topic, topic. So I just want to thank Joe McClain. Look, I have I, I be putting people just names out there. Woof. <laughs> Artist, um, activist. He's uh, uh, in the Navy, been in the Navy for forever. And I was like, you know, give me a topic. And he gave me a topic of perseverance. So thank you, Joe, for giving us our topic for today. God bless you. May God keep you. And I'm so proud of your growth in Christ. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So perseverance, y'all. When you first gave me this topic, I was like, ooh, this is heavy. This is heavy. Okay? I got a squatting rack with some 25s, some 45s, some 35s on it, baby. It's heavy. Okay? Heavy. Perseverance. Let's get to the dictionary definition of that, okay? S Let me read my board. Excuse me. <clears throat> Doing something despite the difficulty or delay in achieving success oh my god did i just slap you i'm so sorry i slapped myself too don't worry about it we're gonna do it again doing something despite the difficulty this is perseverance 
doing something despite the difficulty, or delay in achieving success. Baby, do you know perseverance? Because look, perseverance be waking me up at three in the morning like, girl, we got to keep going. I I know you don't want to keep going, but baby, you got to. You got so much to do. You are filled with so many gifts. Look at them kids. I'm talking to perseverance. Look at them kids looking at you. They are out there just trying to build a foundation of their life off you and what you're trying to do. You better go and get it. Go persevere. I was like, man, one, that, that word has a lot of letters. I ain't really wrote perseverance out, you know, in any way, but I'm looking at it. And it got a lot of letters. And you know what? We're going to break down this word, word biblically, okay? More so like references, references, not actual Bible scriptures, but we're going to get into stories of people in perseverance. Look, I'm already telling my sermon, y'all. Look, don't be rushing me. Let it ride. Let it ride. Perseverance, doing something despite the difficulty or delay in achieving success. Have you done something difficult, but you got it done? Or at least you're working to? Raise your hand. Okay. Delay in achieving success. Look, is there stuff that you are trying to do? And you like, oh my God, look, I done had all these setbacks. COVID, look at cold COVID. COVID. The years we're living in COVID. The years, multiple years, many, 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 many months living in COVID. Holy matrimony. Delay in achieving success. Ouch. Raise your hand if you're there because I'm, hello, I'm late to class, but I'm here. (laughs) I'm late to class, but I'm here. Okay, that's perseverance, y'all. And I know just through human life, we've all been met with something like we're really trying to do or just circumstances in life, being black, being a woman, being a man, being transgender, being a lesbian. I mean, we all fall in the same bracket of human. We all got stuff to do. Okay, we all got work to do and we're trying to get it done. Perseverance is built with so many different layers that we're going to get to how being like how being in perseverance, you know, um, being in perseverance the right way. You know what it looks like for you, the healthy way to persevere. That's the word I was looking for. The healthy way to persevere. Remember, this is run life. We're running life with Christ in mind. So perseverance, look all day with the run in life okay point one faith if you're trying to have if you're trying to do something okay first you have to believe that you can do it or there are steps there's resources you have to have made in your mind that okay mm, i really want to get this book done i'm talking to myself hold on i'm talking to myself i really want to get this book done i believe that i could get this book done It's going to take me writing. I need to see myself writing. I need to feel writing rise up in my spirit and take control of my hands, my finger and my mind. I need the space, the environment. There has to be this element of belief, full belief, not just half because you're just like, oh, I know you only need a mustard seed, but go past the mustard seed. Start envisioning you writing running you know i like to we just gonna go around running running i still want to get an olympic medal and the little tattoos with the rings on it but look god's working on me i might do a master athlete thing but look just imagine yourself and really play that belief in your head over and over and over and over and over again okay you have to like have an element of faith to be to be able to per- persevere correctly okay I wrote down persevere or belief activity. I mean, you really can't believe it if you ain't write it down. What did the Lord say? Uh, uh, who was it? Prophet. I don't know. It was a major minor prophet. You know, write the vision to make it plain. You write it down. Write some of the steps. Write some of your visions. I mean, let what is literally manifesting in your psychological mind be on physical, real round paper for you to read and address every day. Oh, that is the proper way to persevere. It has to be in here. Everything that you do literally in life, it starts in the mind. The manifestation of the idea. Boom. That is like the that should be the mustard seed of the faith. Just the sheer pop of it out of the universe that, hey, 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to try my best to do this. Let's persevere and get to it. Belief activity. You have to write the thing down. Write your vision down and read it. Look at it. Draw a picture of it. Dream of it. Those faith activities really get you fueled and really imprint those everyday activities. I'm moving on to my second point of how you persevere the right way. You have to be able to see it and constantly manifest it in your mind as this beautiful idea, whether it's God giving it to you or you giving it to you or, you know, however it finds a way in your mind, you keep that and you photocopy that thing. Copy, copy, paste, copy, paste everywhere in your life uh, how you can always go back so you'll never forget. This is off topic, but I'm going to say this. One thing that is so poignant about the word of God and living a right lifestyle, this also goes along with pers- perseverance because uh, for those that are Christians, Christians, we're all pressing toward the cross and trying to be a better person or have better morals or stop doing, you know, certain things. We all have our thing that we do that we probably shouldn't do or that demonic influence that kind of just follows us. And sometimes our, our downfall, um, we have to constantly imprint the notion of what we can do and put it everywhere we possibly can in our lives so we won't forget. A lot of ways people fall away from God is from lack of perseverance. And we forget how great he is, how wonderful he is, how powerful he is, how many people he healed. I mean, the lepers, um, people losing ears because they got their ears cut off. I mean, God did so many amazing things. And sometimes we get so lulled into the world that those imprints of of how we see God and how we know God is we lose them. We lose the memory. I, Charlie, did you hear that? We lose the memory. So those belief and those faith activities, those belief activities are so important to keep you on track because when you actually do kind of just, oh, you get down and you don't want to persevere anymore. Those reminders are there to start you back up like fuel. Okay. Going to my point two: schedule goal. I have a schedule and a goal. I'll give you my personal schedule and goal. When I wake up every day, my personal schedule and goal toward, you know, what I'm doing, actually schedule, I'm trying to do so I can persevere properly. I'll read it over here. Number one, pray scripture. I try to make it a point. As soon as I crack open my eyes, like, and I get like (laughs) consciousness that I'm actually awake. I immediately go into prayer. I don't need anything stopping me, distracting me. I don't need my daughter, you know, mommy, you know, as soon as I am literally physically conscious that I am awake, I pray because I don't want nothing to stop my connection with God. The first thing I do when I take a breath and know that I'm alive again, I pray. I pray even if it's sleep, Lord God, oh, I'm awake. Thank you for the, you know, sometimes we do that. <laughs> And that's okay. And then be like, look, and Lord God, I just want to thank you. Look, I wake up in prayer like that all the time, but at least I got there and I started my day. The first thing in my day with God on my mind, it's hard, but if you practice and if you want to do it, you'll do it. Perseverance. Okay. Second thing is roll out and stretch. I have a problem with my calf muscle. It gets so tight. So, and I'm very flexible and still very fit. So I'm getting older and I have to make sure I'm stretching and taking care of my muscles before I start my day because my day won't be right if I don't. Okay. Dress, do my hair. Look, I got a lot of hair. This ain't mine, but it's hooked on to mine, but it's my hair. I need my hair to be done. Okay. Breakfast and tea. Tea is important to me. Tea ensures that I sit down outside and I have a quiet time with God to really focus this and focus in and hone in and on exactly what he wants me to do. Sometimes I don't even have tea and I don't even spend that private time with God or I spend it in the house. But going outside, looking at the trees, listening to the birds, literally chirping and stuff, it sets me at peace for what I need to do to fully um, execute his will for the day. Tea. I love tea. Worship and affirmation. I get up in a mirror, baby, and I sing to the Lord. I sing like I never sang before. I pretend I'm Beyonce. I pretend I'm Shirley Caesar. I pretend I'm Dottie Peoples. I pretend, I pretend I'm Mary Mary. And I get up there and I worship God because taking a form of worship before you even start your day, it sets it, baby. It sets it in stone. I mean, it's like cement. Like, look, I'm unmovable. I done talked and and bled out to God for whatever it is, or rejoiced, or lament. I gave everything to God the, during my worship. 
I'm unmovable. When I'm done worshiping, I go tell myself, baby, you good. You great. You could do this. I know your leg hurt, but you a thug. You could get through this. You been through everything. You done squeezed out a baby. A baby. She was nine pounds, dog. Ow. Why you do that? But I did it. But I just affirm who I am in the moment just so I understand. Like I've given mine to God, but I, I need to understand who I am in God um, to be able to move throughout the day properly. These things stick with me. I mean, I'm loading this every morning. Load, load, load. Work out. Go get that money. And the last one is intense Bible study. I be missing that one sometimes, but I get to it and I get in it. But I did a Bible study just now. So we went in the day. All right. So you got to get in, in a type of flow. My point two was flow. You got to get in a type of flow for your goal, because to get to that goal, you got to do that thing every day. If it's lift weights, you want to get stronger. You got to do that thing every day or as three times a day, whatever your regimen is. You need to build a regimen and a schedule toward whatever that goal is that you're trying to persevere in. OK, you guys follow me. Good job. Good job. Good job. Point three, consider rest. Look, that's a lot of thing that we miss. And it's not even really acknowledged in our generation with how fast the computers are going and the marketing's going and the world is going. Everybody's doing freaking something. All these posts, people be posting stuff from like four years ago and you be thinking it's today and it makes you feel like, oh my God, I'm so behind. And they started their business and then you didn't know that they're, roof, they're moving in real time. OK, they actually rested. They actually, you know, had to cry a little bit. You have to consider rest. I know you're persevering and you want to pour yourself out and give your all. But look, when you give your all, you got to rest and recover. Some of the uh, the rest activities I put down for myself, even in my situation, because I got a I got a janky situation right now. And I had to ask God, like, what did I do to rest during persevering all of this emotional Bukaka. I cried. I put crying as a form of rest. Sometimes we build up so much inside and it's like, oh my God, this is so much. It's just piling up in me. And you gotta just cry it out. Somebody's been getting I've been getting really close to is just like, let me know. It's okay to cry. Like sometimes I'll be talking about something and just he's like, it's okay. It's okay. Just cry. And I'll be like, <laughs> it'd be thug to <laughs> It's ugly because I don't like crying in front of people. It's so sad. I joined a church the other day and I cried in front of everybody. I literally turned my back like and let the mother know, look, I don't want everybody to see me crying. I have a thing, but don't. If I'm crying, just you turn around. Like, I shouldn't turn around. You turn around. Like, just give me my moment. But he's letting me know and he was letting me know it was okay to cry. That was my form of rest because I've been piling up mad dashing you know you mad dash everywhere and you're, you're just going going and sometimes things hurt you as you go and you're like you know what slap a band-aid on oh uh, uh, go and then when you feel when you sit down and feel the pain you just be like it is six o'clock you'll sit down and just be like <laughs> and you gotta just cry and I really considered that a form of rest because it was a really a form of rest that I could let it out and reset my second one was therapy, talking to somebody and being totally vulnerable about some of the things you're going through to where you're not going to get have it thrown up in your face or you can just let it out in an appropriate place, place you can let it out. I mean, some people might have that friend that you fully have access to that you can like fully talk to and it's OK. Other times people don't. And there's resources for you. I actually got two resources to some free mental health services. And if you want them, let me know if you're in the San Diego area. But also you could call 211 here in San Diego. I don't know if that's everywhere to get resources for mental health. Because I know just for what the pandemic has been doing to us, you need to talk to somebody. Okay? Even myself. I'm actually lining up for an appointment. So don't be ashamed. Look, <clears throat> I done lost my mind, my, my mind about three, four, five, like for real, three, four or five times this year alone. Okay. Go talk to somebody. Praise the Lord. Fellowship. Don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Can I say it again? Don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. You know why? Because they're going to reset you in a real way. You don't know what somebody's testimony is. You don't know what somebody has been through 
to bring your raggedy butt through. I'm raggedy too. It's okay. I'm not talking about you. We're all raggedy together. But you never know what somebody has for you or that hug. Somebody hugged me on Wednesday at Bible study. And I was like, uh, I really needed that. I didn't know I needed it. It was a stranger. And I was in worship, but I was in a full, like, I'm about to wreck all these chairs in front of me type of worship. And they just hugged me and it did something. And I, you never know your worship in front of these people might do something for them. Like, oh, I want to praise God like that. Like, oh, that's in my spirit. And I'm working on that. I'm working on that physical display of just praising God and not caring who's around. Because somebody might need to see your praise and be like, mm, God is that good. God is that good. And it does something for them. You never know. It's in Christ. Like the stuff you do matters everywhere, every day, because... You never know how you touch somebody, okay? Doing something different. Sometimes, um, that's the next one. Sometimes uh, life could get mundane. You work, you sleep, you eat, you poop, you shower, feed the dog, wash the dog, wash the clothes, you know? Do something different. It's your rest time. Actually read. I know people be doing podcasts, but actually like reread. read <laughs> Go run. Go walk. Go get on the swing. You know, you've been looking at it at the park. Who cares if you're 40? Go get on that pick and swing. And go just go get your kid out. Get your inner kid out. You might like it. Do something different that just makes your soul alive to reset you. So, so important during your perseverance periods. Okay. Number four, keep applying pressure. You see this hairdo? What is it doing? Applying pressure. Okay. Look. It took me all but 30 minutes, but the pr- y'all, do you f- look, do y'all feel it? Look, this wing liner, when women do this, it, they always mess up. Ain't no one try unless you just keep putting on makeup, which I be taking breaks. <laughs> Hello, I tried today. Apply that pressure. When you go lift weights the next time, then throw a five on there. See if you can do that five. See if you can do that five. That five ain't nothing. You ain't going to feel it. Then I'll be a part of your regiment. So when you get to the next week, you can be like, you know what? I'm going to put another five. Then once you conquer that extra five, you done did ten. So guess what? You come back that third week. You're putting tens on. You're not just putting five. You're putting tens on, baby. Apply pressure. I sat down to write that book. Look. I got in the zone. It had a little wine. Mm. You can have a little bit. Just a little bit. Put my, my playlist on. I wrote a thousand words. Next day, I ate some chocolate with the wine. Mm. And my music plays. I wrote 2,000 words. Apply pressure, okay? Do everything you need to get further and further and further as long as it don't hurt you. But keep applying pressure, okay? Let's hit it again. Because, look, we got to hit it again so you fully understand how to persevere the right way. You don't want to run out of gas. You don't want to be losing your mind and we breaking your neck and all that stuff. We just want you to succeed and keep going. Perseverance. Doing something despite the difficulty. Delay or delay in achieving its... Did y'all hear that? I didn't hear nothing. Delay in achieving success. <laughs> Point one, be faithful. Have a, like... Faith, build, believe. You can do it. Do those belief activities. I can. I will. Get in the mirror. Write it down. Write the vision to make it plain. Then you need to flow. What's your schedule like? You running every day? You writing every day. Are you praising God every day? Are you praying every day? I need you to flow, baby. Every day, don't be disrupted. Have a flow and a schedule toward that goal you're trying to persevere to. Consider rest. I know you get tired. You pushing. You doing everything despite the difficulty. Sometime you need rest. No, most time, all the time, you need rest. If you got to cry, cry. Therapy, talk to somebody. Fellowship, get among the saints. Get word in your spirit. Have somebody feed you. Sometimes it's tiresome, right? Reading your Bible by yourself. You'd be like, oh my God, this is so dry. It could be dry because I already know. It could be so dry. But when somebody get up in a pulpit and just put that zeal in the word the way you weren't going to it just make you eat different you'd be feeling like dang you cooked this up this word is good get amongst the saints and get some word in your ear and get fuel right get around some people that love you to push you up do something different i know you're 40 50 get on that swing you know you want to get on that swing 
Go paint. You've been wanting to do a paint and sip all year since you heard about it was being a thing. Go do that. Go run. You've been wanting to break out in the sprint just to see what happened. Go do that. Ain't nobody going to see you at 6 in the morning in some grass. Just go to a far field. Go run and look around and be like, ooh, I did that. I'm slow, but I got out there and I ran. And I bet you you're going to feel good. You're going to feel good. It's going to reset you. Last one, keep applying pressure. Honey, perseverance is about applying that pressure. Do something despite the difficulty. You know how hard it is to push on something after you done gave it your max and you got to give it more? It's in there. It's in there. You can do it. Just keep applying pressure. I love y'all because this has been a good topic. Everybody needs a little bit of this perseverance type uh, activity. You need your faith to be uh, in there. You need your flow to be going. You need your rest and you need to keep applying pressure. I think this speaks to all of us, no matter what age, no matter what gender, no matter <laughs> ginger, all ginger. I said ginger, <laughs> LGBTQ, XYZ, all of y'all, no matter who it is. This is needed because we're all doing something. Either we're working in the kingdom or not. We're using this. The enemy uses this. Look, don't get it twisted. The enemy uses this. Don't get it twisted. This is the way to keep going the right way. Okay? I don't know about the the rest part for demons and, you know, spiritual things. I have no clue. I don't have any expertise in that. (laughs) But applying pressure and making sure you're going, even though everything's against you, this is a great proper way to be able to function healthy. Okay, we're running life with Christ in mind. I want you to like, follow, subscribe, and share because when these notifications go off, bing, 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 I want you to be there. I want to talk to you again. I want to grow with you and love you and love on God with you because that's what we do. All right. I'm your girl. Oh, wait, we can't leave. We can't leave without doing this. We can't leave without doing this. I wrote down different names of people in the Bible that actually have persevered through crazy stuff. And I want to be able to mention, I wrenched, I put them too far on my list to where I, it wasn't even my, in my lines up. So we're still doing a conclusion. Moses, hello? Them people was nagging the heck out of him, okay? But he had to persevere and try to get these people to the promised land, which he didn't get to. But he persevered in taking all these people out of Egypt. And trying to get him to the place that God wanted him to be. Paul, spreading the gospel was a doozy for him. My God, he murdered the folks that was spreading the gospel, then became the folk that was spreading the gospel. And then the, he was a lead in spreading the gospel. Hello, he had to persevere with the jail. Lord, he looked, I ain't never been jailed. I don't want to go. Jesus, hello, the master perseverance her. That is not a word, but look, he been through it all. Before he even, you know, out the womb, I feel sorry for Mary because she was already persevering. She had a baby in a stall of animals, like an animal, little, a manger. Look, I ain't going to have no baby amongst some cow booties and hippo booties i know i'm lying and horse booties you know how it probably stank and was rank up in there but she had to get somewhere safe to have her baby god bless you mary well she is blessed (laughs) rachel deborah she's a gangster look her up yourself esther job oh job Perseverant Job was just trying to stay alive and not go crazy, okay? Because his faithfulness. He didn't even know it. Look, he didn't know what happened. He just know he lost it and got it back. But he went through hell in between, literally, all hell. Thank Job, thank you for her. Noah, them people was making fun of him for building that ark. And then was calling on him like, when let me in the ark, I'm drowning. But he had to persevere to build all that, you know? Thank you, Noah. Joseph... Rachel, that's about all I wrote, but just imagine this. if you're familiar with those stories or you don't know those people, go check out their story of perseverance. When you read it, it'll be very apparent. You can Google it and it'll give you just a synopsis of what they did in their life, their lives. And you could see, feel, you know, if you're, uh, you know, very emotive by things like you evoke emotion easily. You could put yourself there and be like, yeah, dang, I can't, I couldn't imagine. So perseverance is key to human existence, y'all. Keep persevering. Keep being great. All right. Like, follow, subscribe, share. And I hope to see you for the next Run Life podcast. It was wonderful having you. I love you. Be great. Keep running life and living Christ. Bye. Run Life.